for lesson one in our Intro to Pilates series, we are going to focus in on diaphragmatic breath. Breathing is the basis of really everything we do in Pilates, so we have to start here with lesson one. Now, if you just found this video through search, a heads up, as you maybe already inferred, this is a Intro to Pilates series. So there's a welcome video that comes before this that'll kind of give you the breakdown of what to expect if you want to start there and go through the video sequentially. If you don't care about going through it sequentially though, that's absolutely fine. You just want to learn a little bit more about diaphragmatic breathing. That's great. And let's get to it. So what is diaphragmatic breathing? I want to be clear here that the techniques we're going to go over do not need to apply to every single breath you take throughout the day. The majority of the breaths we take throughout the day are passive. We don't have to consciously think about it. Our body is just doing its thing as it should, okay? So you don't need to now overthink every breath you take. Diaphragmatic breathing is the active, intentional breath work that we do always in a Pilates class, but you can also apply it to other types of workouts or just anytime you're making an effort throughout the day. It could be picking up something heavy, maybe, maybe picking up your kid out of the car seat, or standing up, getting up off the floor, out of the chair. It'll vary person to person, but bottom line is that there are instances outside of a Pilates class where diaphragmatic breathing can be helpful. Now let's break down a proper diaphragmatic breath. The inhale is going to be through your nose, and as you inhale, we fill the diaphragm up with air. So think, the air is taking up space, so things are going to expand. So your pelvic floor is going to relax down. It's not a bearing down or a pushing down, it's just a relaxing of the pelvic floor. And our rib cage is going to expand three-dimensionally. It's not just gonna flare open through the front, you're going to get lateral expansion through that rib cage and expansion into the back. So if you think of your ribs as kind of the handle on a bucket, think of when you inhale, that bucket handle is lifting up, and when you exhale, it's lowering down. And your diaphragm is down here, not up here. So a lot of times we see inhales up in the shoulders, but instead you wanna think of expanding the rib cage. Our exhale in Pilates is going to be out through the mouth, through gently pursed lips, kind of like you're slowly blowing out a birthday candle. And it's audible, so I'll do it so you can hear, although it's exaggerated because my mic's right there. And it's a slow endurance breath, so you're not just pushing all the air out. Now, as you exhale, like we talked about, those ribs are gonna move gently in and down, or that handle on the bucket is going to lower down. And we're going to activate and engage through our deep core muscles, the transverse abdominis, which kind of wraps around us like a corset, and the pelvic floor. Now, your transverse abdominis, you're not pulling in the belly button or sucking in. It's more like a 360 bracing. Everything's sort of firming up. So instead of thinking of sucking in, think of this firmness. It's almost like a widening of that lower abdominal wall. And when it comes to the pelvic floor, it's going to be a gentle lift of the pelvic floor. So you can think we're exhaling, the air is going out and taking up less space in our canister, our abdominal canister. So things move in and down, they firm up, that pelvic floor lifts. Now this is kind of a weird analogy for the pelvic floor, but remember those rubber popper toys? It was like a little rubber curve, a semicircle, and you push it concave onto the floor and then it pops convex and flies up to the ceiling. Remember those? Anyway, picture the shape of a contact lens if I'm old and you don't remember those toys. When you inhale the pelvic floor, think of it as that gentle curve this way. It's lowering, it's relaxing. And as you exhale, it's that same curve just in the other direction, okay? Lifting upwards. So why do we care? Why is this kind of breath important? for many reasons, and I won't get too into the weeds with it, but the big thing is that our deep core and our pelvic floor is active during this kind of breath work. Diaphragmatic breathing is a core exercise, and by doing it properly, and by activating the deep core muscles on the pelvic floor, we're strengthening them and ensuring that they can help support us most effectively. They help stabilize our spine, stabilize our pelvis. A strong deep core and diaphragmatic breathing, they go hand in hand. So we are gonna practice 
all the components of a proper diaphragmatic breath, but before we get there, I want to highlight three very common mistakes I see with this. I don't love the word mistakes, but these are three non-ideal breathing patterns that I see a lot. So the first is inhaling up into your shoulders and neck. I see this a lot, especially in people who tend to hold a lot of tension in the necks. The inhale is all up here instead of down here in the diaphragm. So just notice when you inhale, are your shoulders shrugging up to your ears? Instead, you wanna keep them relaxed and you wanna think of directing that inhale down. Fill up your diaphragm, don't fill up your shoulders and neck. Next up is a reverse breathing pattern. So in a reverse breathing pattern, on the inhale, you sort of suck in, and on the exhale, you push out and down. Remember, we wanna do the opposite. On the inhale, you think of expanding, and on the exhale is when things move in and down and contract a little bit. Now, this breathing pattern is something that I used to do all the time without even realizing it, and it just goes to show why education is so important and why I'm so excited about this video series. Step one in correcting anything is just being aware that you're even doing it wrong in the first place. So it wasn't until I learned about all this stuff that I recognized in myself, like, oh, wait, I'm completely doing the opposite of what my body's supposed to do. So I'm digressing, but it's on the inhale, expand through the rib cage, relax down through the pelvic floor. On the exhale, ribs move in and down, brace through the abdominal wall, lift of the pelvic floor. So you just wanna make sure that you're not doing the opposite. What's very common is it'll sort of only happen on the exhale through the lower abs and the pelvic floor. So the inhale will look right, you'll see some expansion, and on the exhale, you'll see the ribs move in and down like they're supposed to, but then you see a protruding out of the lower abdominals and a bearing down on the pelvic floor. So be mindful, you may be getting part of it right and sort of neglecting down there. And then the third and final breathing mistake that I wanna draw attention to that I see a lot that I also used to do is sucking in around the belly button. And this is why the cue belly button to spine isn't always necessarily the best cue. What happens when we suck in is that we get a lot of engagement through the middle TAs, but we kind of neglect the lower abdominals. We're not getting engagement down here. So instead of that pulling in of the belly button, think of a firming up of the entire abdominal wall, focusing first on the lower abdomen where it's almost like a widening and flattening sensation, just like a gentle 360 brace. Okay, so I just threw a lot of information at you and you may feel a little overwhelmed. You know, proper breathing and practicing it, it can be frustrating because it's like, breathing, I should know how to do this. It shouldn't be so difficult. But then when you break down all the steps, there really are a lot of components to it. And if you're new to this, it's going to take a while and a lot of practice to get that kind of brain body communication pathway down. So don't be frustrated. Not every breath is gonna be perfect at first, but we are gonna kind of slowly go through this and put into action some of the stuff we just talked about. So for this practice part, I want you to come and sit in a chair. Um, just if you're tight through the hips, seated on the floor may not be the best. So let's all come up to a chair and practice breathing. Okay, so this angle is a little weird, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> so starting in a seated position, we're just gonna focus in on the inhale, okay? So we'll focus in on the inhale and on the exhale, just let it out, relax, okay? Not a forceful exhale, just let it go. So I want you to start with your hands in your lap. And the first thing we're gonna focus on is expanding the rib cage without hiking the shoulders up, okay? So we want to take a couple shoulder rolls here, reverse the direction, just shrugging them and then just stop with them relaxed and down. Okay, we're not holding any tension here, hands on our lap. So we're gonna inhale through the nose as we do, think of directing your breath down into your rib cage. And then exhale, just let it go. We're not focused on the exhale right now, one thing at a time, okay? So inhale, notice your shoulders wanna hike up, don't let them, just keep them relaxed. And just let the exhale go. Now, if you're having trouble with this, if you're noticing you're wanting to hold tension here, it can be helpful to hold something of weight, like small hand weights in your hands to just give yourself that kind of traction down and force the shoulders to relax a little bit. Let's do one more breath though. Exhale, let it go. All right, now we're still gonna focus in on the inhale, but now I want us to really focus in on what the rib cage is doing, okay? So you're gonna bring your hands to either side of your rib cage. If this is uncomfortable though, you could also do opposite hand to opposite rib cage like you're hugging yourself, whatever works best for your shoulders, okay? 
And what we're going to focus it on is lateral expansion. So expanding into our hands this way. Sometimes on the inhale, what happens is it becomes just totally a belly breath. So all the inhale, all the expansion is coming forward. And we want to try to get the rib cage to expand three dimensionally. So into your sides and into your back. So with your hands here as a cue, again, just focus on the inhale. Don't worry about the exhale. Inhale slow through the nose. And can you expand that rib cage into your hands and exhale, just relax it. Keep going like that. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, relax it. Couple more like that. Inhale. Expand the rib cage into your hands. You should feel the ribs move a little bit. Exhale, let it go. One more time. Okay. So I want you to notice if maybe one side of your rib cage seems to move more easily, the other side feels a little stickier, you're not getting as much movement, all good information to have might mean you need to do some more opening through one side of your body or the other, maybe both sides are feeling sticky, just good things to notice and know. Now we're gonna shift our focus into the exhale. Remember that exhale is slowly out through our mouth, like you are very slowly blowing out a birthday candle, but you don't want the flame to actually go out, it's so slow, okay? So let's find that same hand position. And I want you to, if unless it's really uncomfortable for your shoulders, I want you to do this, okay? With the fingertips pointing down slightly. And on the exhale, we're gonna focus on the ribs moving in and down in that direction. And we're gonna slide our hands, kind of giving ourselves that cue, okay? So start with your hands on the side. And inhale through the nose, expand the rib cage. And now let's focus in on that slow exhale. As you slowly exhale, those ribs gently slide closed and down. It's not too forceful because we don't want to bear down on the pelvic floor. We're just focusing on a gentle in and down motion of the ribs. Inhale through the nose. Focus on that exhale. What's going on with the rib cage? Hands slide in and down. Let's do that one more time. Okay, now we're still gonna focus on the exhale, but let's shift our attention to the lower abdominals, okay? So now I want you to bring your hands here to your lower stomach, just gently against it. And on the exhale, we're gonna focus on firming through the lower stomach, almost think of gently pulling the stomach away from your hands, okay? So you know the deal by now, we inhale through the nose, focus on that exhale, Focusing on the lower abdominal wall. It's a gentle brace, a gentle firming. Maybe think of moving a little bit away from the hands. Inhale. Exhale, same thing. It's that slow, audible exhale through the nose, lower abdominals, gently tense up. Tense is the wrong word. Firm up. <laughs> and maybe you feel a little pull away of the fabric of your leggings away from your hands. Let's do that one more time. It's like a widening or almost like a flattening of that abdominal wall. Inhale, relax it. Okay, now I want you to take a second to think about what was easier for you. Was it easier for you to get the upper abdominal engagement, the ribs moving in and down on that exhale? Or was it easier for you to feel connected to your lower abdominals on the exhale? Maybe you didn't notice a difference, but if you did notice a difference, I have a little tip for you. And I'll use myself as an example. For me, I am a little external oblique dominant, so my rib cage really moves in and down, but it's harder for me to get the lower abdominals to come to the party. So whatever's harder for you, that's what you're gonna think of engaging first on your exhale. So when I exhale, I think slowly out through the mouth, and then I think pelvic floor lifts, lower abdominals engage, then I think ribs move in and down. If I start with the ribs moving in and down, which I my body already goes right to do, then it's harder for me to get to the lower abdominals to come to the party. So I want you to direct your mindfulness to the area that's harder to engage first. Now back to breathing, we're gonna focus on pelvic floor, okay? So maybe you just do it seated, upright. Maybe if you're having trouble connecting to the pelvic floor, try it leaning forward a little bit. When we lean forward, we tend to have more of that physical sensation of our pelvic floor like actually 
touching the seat of our chair, you have more contact, so it can be a helpful tactile cue. So whatever works for you, either slight lean forward, and when you lean forward, we're not rounding forward, I mean hinge forward from the hips, or you can sit upright, whatever's best for you. Same deal, inhaling through the nose, exhaling slowly through the mouth, and on that inhale, we're gonna think of just relaxing the pelvic floor picture. It could almost rest on your seat. And then on the exhale, think a gentle lift up and away from the seat, okay? So let's just practice. Inhale through the nose, pelvic floor relaxes. You're not pushing it down firmly, just relax. Exhale slowly out through the mouth. And as you do, there's that gentle lift of the pelvic floor. Inhale through the nose, relax. Exhale slowly through the mouth. Little lift, gentle contraction up of the pelvic floor like it's lifting away from the seat. Let's do that once more. And again, if you had trouble connecting, sometimes leaning forward can help. Now we sort of broke it down in it, into its components, but you want to put it all together when we do deep breaths, which is what we will do in the next video in this series, the mini class. But it can be helpful to start this way where you just kind of focus on one component at a time and to sort of identify what aspects of the breath are really easy and what aspects of the breath are a little harder, don't come as naturally, feel a little more disconnected so you know what to focus on as you go forward. Now to finish this up, just one more thing, okay? I talked about how we can utilize diaphragmatic breath to help us move throughout Pilates classes, but in everyday movement as well, if we're doing something hard or requires a connection to that deep core. So let's do that here, and we're just going to link our breath to standing up out of the chair and then sitting down into it. I'm gonna turn my seat to the side. So from here, I want you to start with a slightly wider stance, okay? So feet about shoulders distance apart, arms are gonna reach forward. So on the inhale, we're gonna prepare. On the exhale, we'll lean forward and we'll come to stand, okay? So inhale through the nose, rib cage expands, pelvic floor relaxes. Exhale slowly out through the mouth. As you do, little lift of the pelvic floor, engage to the abdominal wall. Ribs move gently in and down, press our feet into the floor, come up to stand. Staying standing for the inhale. Exhale slowly out through the mouth. Feel that abdominal engagement and then start to move. Bend the knees, send your hips down and back, sitting into the chair. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, we relax the pelvic floor, diaphragm expands, the inhales through our nose. Slow exhale out through our mouth, lift through the pelvic floor, engage to the abdominal wall, ribs move in and down, press your feet into the floor, come to stand. Stay for the inhale. On the exhale, first feel the abdominal engagement and then move. One more time, inhale to prepare for the movement. Exhale out, feel the engagement, that gentle brace, lean forward, come to stand. Final time, we inhale here. Breath first out, feel the abdominal engagement, sit it down. All right, and so that concludes your first little mini lesson on breath. Again, next video, we're going to put all this into practice in a little mini Pilates class, focus in on deep core and breath work. So you can stay tuned for that video, or if you just wanted to tune into this one, then thanks for listening. <laughs>